You can use the weapon of dynamics to make any simple hi-hat groove sound really cool and way more difficult. I'm gonna show you five examples of this and I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do it yourself. Hey, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. I believe that no matter who you are, you can master the drums when you're armed with the right know-how. And I believe today's video is gonna help you do just that. Hey, while you're here, be sure to download my totally free e-guide, The Secret to Hi-Hat Sixteenths. How to play a one-handed 16th hi-hat groove at 80 beats a minute. Really cool, really practical info. Be sure to check that out while you're here. Any boring drum part can be made way more interesting by adding musical dynamics. The principles we're talking about today apply to anything you might ever play on the drum set, but it does apply especially to hi-hat because I believe the hi-hat's the most dynamically versatile instrument on the kit. You can play it so quietly and so loudly depending on how tight or how open you have it. There's so many different spots you can strike, not to mention you can play foot sounds with it. And so that's why I love hi-hat, and that's why we're focusing on hi-hat grooves in particular today. Now before we wrap up this lesson, I'm also gonna share with you two really simple and subtle but very important tips for getting a better sound out of your hi-hats, in particular a better closed hat sound. These have to do with how tight you're pressing down with your foot and where you have your stick placed, but these are huge. I wish somebody had shared these with me years before I finally figured them out. So I hope they, they help you out too. So we're gonna get to those at the end of the lesson. First, let's get going with seeing how we can spice up these five groove examples. First, I'm gonna play you the groove, just robotic, simple, no dynamic contrast, and then we'll spice it up a little bit. Now, how can you get better at this? Maybe you're able to sit down at your kit and you're able to start figuring this out and adding in the dynamics. Maybe you're, you're at a point in your playing where you've built up the abilities, the coordination, technical abilities to just do it. And so it's just a matter of employing the mindset and saying, hey, I'm gonna be more dynamic. But maybe you've gotta be more intentional and focused in your practicing to build up that ability. Maybe you're not there yet. So I hope these tips will help you. Practice crescendos and decrescendos on your practice pad or on your snare. Uh, if you don't know what the fancy uh, Italian musical terms mean. Crescendo is gradually get louder, decrescendo is gradually get softer. So if you are practicing a bunch on a pad, this is something easy to do there. Play a measure of crescendoing, getting louder, sixteenths, followed by a measure of decrescendoing, eighths, getting softer, eighths, and go back and forth with that. So it's kind of like, like a wave washing into the beach and going back out where it's just a gradually getting softer. And then flip it around and do crescendoing eighths, decrescendoing sixteenths. It doesn't matter the specifics of how you do this. You can practice this concept with anything. Uh, the point is intentionally use dynamics, intentionally get louder and get softer. And then what you can also do is practice just playing sixteenths, just 
sixteenths and suddenly get louder, suddenly get softer. Imagine that there's a conductor standing there and he's like conducting you and pulling these different dynamics out of you and saying, okay, louder, louder, okay, softer, softer. And so make yourself do that, challenge yourself to do that and gradually get loud, suddenly get soft and suddenly get loud, gradually get softer. Point is, be intentional about practicing that. It's just one of those weird things that yes, it does require some hand technique and that we have to choke down on the sticks to get quiet, to decrease the stick height. Uh, and then we have to open up a little bit more to get louder. And so otherwise, from a technique standpoint, that's pretty much it. And it's just a matter of employing that mindset. So do it, practice it. In doing those things, we're utilizing what I like to call dynamic grip, which is what I was just mentioning, that when you're playing quietly, you want to grip a little bit more firm to minimize stick height while maintaining control. So you're controlling every nuance, every bit of the stick's motion versus when you get loud, you can be looser. You're letting laws of physics take over and that's great. You want the stick to move within your hand when you're playing loudly. So practice utilizing that dynamic grip. Be super loose, wide open when you're playing loudly and then close it down a little bit more. Not tight, but just a little bit more firm when you're playing softly. That technique there is gonna really help you with executing the dynamics well. And of course, stay totally relaxed. Easy to say, harder to do. Uh, that was something I had to focus a lot on in college where especially if I was playing 16ths on the hi-hats, something about that. Something about playing on the hi-hats is so easy to get, you know, tight up, really tight up here and like hunch over a little bit and just get too stiff. Total amateur move where you look like a total amateur doing that. And as soon as you can relax a little bit, as soon as you can just relax your shoulders, relax your hands, you look so much more confident doing it and much more professional, not to mention it's easier. You can actually play faster, you can play louder, you can add in dynamics. The time is better, things are smoother, everything improves when you're relaxed. So that's why that is a good point in and of itself for all of drumming. Be relaxed, it requires intention. You have to remind yourself to stay relaxed. You have to tell yourself to be relaxed until it becomes habit. Build that habit, make that a goal. Okay, last tip for how you can practice getting better at this. Work on an accent tap pattern on the hi-hat. Work on a loud, soft, loud, soft hi-hat pattern you can use when playing hi-hat 16th grooves. That means going edge, top, edge, top on the hi-hats. Now this is something, I've got a, a whole video exploring this and how to get better at doing this. And so check that out in the description if you wanna dig into that lesson. Basically, how to apply the molar technique to the hi-hats. But work on that because that's something valuable if you can do that with your left hand also. That's just another valuable tool for throwing in accents and just doing interesting random things with your hi-hat patterns. Okay, the final tips about how to improve your hi-hat sound. I love things like this because they're so simple and you can so quickly just make things sound better. And so these were game-changing tips for me that I wish had been shared with me much earlier than they were. It took me too long to figure this out. First one is don't close the hats as tight as you think they need to be closed when you're playing a closed hat pattern, especially if it's something fast. It's actually gonna feel more smooth and buttery and nice and it's gonna flow better if you loosen the hats just a tiny bit, just to give yourself a little bit of note length. So instead of it just being a t -t -t -t, make it a little more of a t -t 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 -t. It just helps smoothen it out. We're not going for a thick, sloshy sound yet, but we don't wanna be super tight. You're gonna find that your, your quick hi-hat 16th grooves, they just flow better, they feel better when you do that. So maybe it means not pressing your toe in so hard. Maybe it means resting your heel down, you know, let your left leg just stay heel down. You're just putting a little bit of pressure on with your toes, whatever you gotta do there to make that happen. Second tip, this was a huge one for me personally. I wouldn't share these if they didn't help me massively in my playing a few years ago. But I was finding that my hi-hat 16th grooves were just clumsy and I was getting tired and they just weren't feeling good. And what I started to realize was that stick placement on the hi-hats does matter. Something that people don't really talk about too much, but you'll notice that drummers who have a great hi-hat 16th pattern, this is something that they all have in common where they're not digging the shaft of the stick into the edge of the hi-hats. You can do that if you want a heavy, just pss, pss, like loud sound. But if you're going for something tight and quick and it just needs to float along, Actually, decrease that angle so you're not at as steep of an angle and strike the edge of the hats more with the neck of the stick than the shoulder. Definitely not the shaft. You don't have to go tip on the top because that might not be the sound you want. You might still want the edge sound for a thicker, smoother kind of sound. But try striking with the neck. You're gonna get a much better response out of the hi-hat. You'll actually get some rebound. That's what helps so much. When you can get some rebound in these fast hi-hat patterns, it makes things feel so much better. They naturally smooth themselves out. That's huge, so practice doing that. All right, that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, I have a free e-guide that's gonna help you out even more and help you go even more in depth with this hi-hat stuff. It's called The Secret to Hi-Hat 16ths. 
Conquer hi-hat 16ths in five steps. You'll learn how to play an accent tap one-handed hi-hat 16th pattern at 80 beats a minute. It's gonna include all the tips and, and exercises for how to build up the hand strength and how to just get much better at that and, and grow in those hi-hat skills. So be sure to check that out before you go. Thanks again, everyone. If you're new to the channel and this video provided you with some value, be sure to subscribe and check out some of my other lessons. I will see you on the next video.